Amen. Now, we are currently on what the study in our Bible study series called uh, Sermon on the Mount, right? And we are on, this week, we are on lesson three. And some of your Bible study groups already have studied lesson three, not remembering last Sunday we watched um, the DVD on him conference. So those of you who have studied, you are in good shape. Now you know all the answers that I'm going to ask you to answer. Amen? Amen. And uh, the, the, the studying the word of God and get together with the godly people is a very important task in our lives. Now, our study says what? Um, it is the most... Uh, um, Our study says, uh, oops, study says that uh, the title of our lesson is the importance of uh, what? obeying God's laws, right? <laughs> what do you think we need laws? God's laws, even any laws, what do you think? Why do we need laws? Laws are there to govern people and govern situations, right? And it's uh, two forms normally. Thou shalt not do this. If you do this, you shall suffer the consequences. And the other one is what? Thou shalt do this. If you do, you'll be what? Blessed. So, if when the laws do not enforce what's going to happen in the law, useless, right? Powerless. And if it's not enforced, don't you agree? Mm -hmm. It needs to be enforced and practiced in the lives of people so that we can have order in our society. We can be benefited from keeping the laws, especially God's laws, if when we are obeying, we don't like this obedience stuff, when we are obeying, then what? We'll be blessed. God will bless our socks off. Amen? Amen. That's what you've been studying last uh, uh, week, right? Now, laws are not perfect. There are some strange laws. Sometimes the laws are set for a certain group of people benefiting certain group of people. And some laws are very, very strange. Nonetheless, it needs to be kept. And in Israel, picking nose on Sabbath day, on Sunday, thou shalt not pick your nose. Why not? It's a sanitary issue, unclean. And uh, you might bleed, and it's going to tent ceremonial service. And in USA, Minnesota says, Thou shalt not wash men's underwear and women's underwear together in the same wash machine. Did you know that? Oh my gosh, I, it was a shock to me. And then another one in uh, France, even though it doesn't matter how much you love your pet pig, thou shalt not name it what? General Napoleon. 
And this one I like most. When you are in Denmark, you don't have to pay in any, any restaurant if your own accord, you're not full. You can eat all you want, and you say, I'm not full, then you don't have to pay. Isn't that good? So if you go to Denmark, please remember this. Law, some laws are very strange, but it's kept. It's enforced. And some laws are not you know, uh, benefiting to majority, but it's kept. And laws are not perfect. Nonetheless, our Lord Jesus says what? It is very, very important to keep God's law. Even though the laws of Moses that seem to be outdated, it is important. How important? It is, God says, a deal breaker. Let's look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, those who what? Practice and teaches, those who are not practicing and teaching the laws of God, these commandments, what? They're going to be what? Least in the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. And those who practices and teaches all the commandments, God's laws, what? They're going to be what? Great in the kingdom of heaven. So it is God saying, Jesus saying, it is a deal breaker. It's going to devise you how qualified you are, how great you are, how small you are. You're going to be a head, you're going to be a tail. And that is why Jesus said we have to obey, not. Jesus mentioned, if you love me, you will what? Obey my commandments, right? And Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations. We all know that, right? And they baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then what? Teach them what? To obey what I commanded you. So how can we teach others to obey when we are not obeying his commandments? So in other words, this lesson is all about how to obey God's laws. How to practice what we what? Preach. And if we do, we're going to be in great in the kingdom of heaven. If we don't, we're going to be hypocrites. We're going to be least in the kingdom of God. Amen? So how do we do this? To see. How do we do this? Now. not clicking, moving, <laughs> say there, <laughs> battery or something, it's, it's not going, okay, all right, now, first C is from uh, verse 17, let's look at verse 17, verse 17, Jesus says that I did not, I did not come to what? abolish the laws, laws of Moses, but to fulfill it, but to complete it. Now, abolish, what does it mean? Huh? Get rid of, overthrow, dissolve, destroy, what else? Dilute, none of those Jesus has come. We often think because Jesus worked on Sabbath day. So Pharisees get after him, right, when Jesus healed on Sabbath day. And we often think that Jesus came to delete few of those, the, more, the laws of Moses, 
so make us feel free, happy, yeah. But Jesus says, I did not come to do that. I did not come to dilute or dissolve or dissolve, I mean, uh, overthrow the laws of Moses, but I have come to complete it. How did he complete the laws of Moses? How did he do that? In the John 19, when Jesus was on the cross, what did he say? It is finished. Do you remember that? It is finished. What is it? It is what? The laws of Moses. I have finished. I have completed the laws of Moses. I have completed, finished. How did he do that? What does that mean? It is finished. You see, God had a covenant relationship with a human being. God gave first covenant made with who? Human Moses, right? And that is the laws of Moses. And it wasn't perfect at all. There was a flaw because perfect God and imperfect, imperfect human being made a covenant relationship. Imperfect human beings make this covenant imperfect. It was temporary. So God revised his covenant. Jesus is the new covenant. He shed his blood. We say his cup is the new covenant. Sealed in his blood, right? And this is the second covenant, everlasting covenant, because God the Father himself, the perfect God, and the perfect Son made a covenant. We are the beneficiaries. So this covenant is perfect, everlasting covenant that we are under. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 13 says, Jesus redeemed us, put on the all the upon himself and died on the cross. Because of that action, we are freed from the yoke of a slavery, from the yoke of the laws and regulations and rules. Now, how then you might think, well, I don't have to keep the Sabbath, I don't have to keep the Ten Commandments, I don't have to remember or practice, and uh, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not. I don't have to? What do you think? <laughs> amen, amen. I love those of you. To, but we want to. That is a new covenant written in our hearts, not written in the paper. When Jesus died on the cross, why did he die? Why did he shed his blood? Why did he take the fall? Why? Huh? Because he loved us. That his love is written in our heart. Therefore, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Uh, because I love Jesus, I want to fulfill all these commandments. Is it possible? Nothing is impossible in Christ who strengthens me. It is uh, impossible if I want to do it myself. 
because I am a human being. I cannot, I shall not take a fall for someone else. Do you? But when I think of who died, who trampled on the ground, thought of me. When I know how much I love my Lord, then it's a possible. And Jesus says what? You abide in me, I abide in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, we don't have a life. Apart from Jesus, we cannot offer ourselves as a sacrifice. So, We've got to be connected to Jesus, attached to Jesus, abide in Jesus, so that his love can fill our hearts so that we are enabled to do what Christ asks us to do. If he's in us, amen? So it's not passive, but active. We absolutely, actively have to come to him come to Jesus and connect to him to experience, to be fulfilled in every moment. Beatitude, verse 5 says what? Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. So how do we practice what we preach? How do we obey God's law? Exercising godly love, agape love, sacrifice, lay me down, not only singing, but practicing, and we cannot do apart from him. So we've got to be connected, and we've got to, we shall, actively connect to Jesus every moment of our lives. Amen? So what's the first C? Connect to who? Jesus. To Jesus who died on a cross. Amen? Amen? And second, verse 20, it says what? If if our righteousness does not exceed, surpasses the righteousness of who? Pharisees. Thou shalt not enter the kingdom of heaven. How do we surpass? This? How do we surpass? How do we exceed what the Pharisees has done? I mean, Pharisees, they were well, prayed every day, right? Prayed three times a day. They are uh, keeping the laws of Moses to the teeth, right? And they have uh, faithfully giving tithes and offerings, and they help, and they were good looking and in the views of uh, society, and they were good people keeping the laws and regulations. They were so disciplined, cadets, sort of. But oftentimes, Jesus scolded them, right? Jesus put them down. Why? Because they were keeping the laws for their own sake, their own benefit, their own merit, their own righteousness. They were not keep their piety, showing they are so spiritual to other people. Whatever they were doing was not supported by their hearts. They weren't innocent. They had a different agenda in their, what they were doing. That's why who knew, who knows the depth of our hearts? God, our Lord Jesus knew. That's why our Lord Jesus often 
criticize the Pharisees. So in order for us to exceed keeping the laws, obeying the laws, more than those of the Pharisees, then we've got to do it. Verse 6, Beatitude. Second Beatitude. It says what? First, hunger. Blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for what? God's righteousness. Then what? They will be filled with God's righteousness. Now, righteousness is about integrity, about honesty, right? And this is coming from the bottom of our hearts. If your hearts are, our hearts are deceiving, if our heart is not in the right place, oh yeah, you can see. And our whole nation is filled with the cheaters. Did you know that? And a guy the, the, uh, the went to a job um, uh, interview, an application usually asks question. Application says, uh, uh, have you ever been com convicted, arrested? The guy says, nope. And then the next question is, why? So if you say no, you don't have to feel that why, right? But not knowing that, he contemplated and think about why he hasn't been arrested or convicted or, and he says, I guess I never got caught. That's a true, honest, unlike some people, and we have a fear with the uh, 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 people who shrugs their shoulders. It's not a big deal. And we often, Christians often, buy into it, we join the crowd. It's not a big deal. Did you know that? And a guy confessed to his uh, pastor that he's been stealing a hammer from his uh, 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 workplace. And it bothered him uh, because he, he became a Christian. But he says, it's no big deal. Everybody does it. And the company, because of everybody doing it, stealing some things out of a company, the company has a loss of $50,000 every year. So what do they do? Put it into the product. Jack up the price. So everybody who buys the product out of their company, whatever they It's not only hurting God's reputation if we join in them, but also it's going to hurt us in the end when we get caught. Or if you don't get caught, you still feel guilty, right? It is not easy to practice righteousness, integrity, be honest all the time. That's why we need to pray for God's righteousness. Then he will fill us. You see, we are not equipped to be per perfect all the time, to do the right thing all the time. The righteousness God is talking about is not doing right thing all the time, but doing right, having right relationship with Almighty God so that he can help us to do right thing. Amen? It's all because of God's grace. God knows the depth of our heart, and he will fill us when we pray for his righteousness. Got it? You know, 
little kid, we open, little kid says this to his mom. He wrote a, a memo. Mom, I cleaned my room five bucks. And you owe me five bucks. And I fold my clothes, you owe me three bucks. And uh, I uh, wear the, uh, the uh, I clean the yard, ten bucks. So you owe me eighteen bucks. This book. Now, mom read that, and she left her eighteen bucks in the envelope with the card. Dear son. I bore you nine months. You puke. You made me puke for three months, no charge. I stood up all night long, even though I had to go to work next morning because you are sick. I cared for you, no charge. I take you everywhere, baseball, Basketball, piano lessons, everywhere, no charge. It's a total break. When son saw that money, and he said what? Mom, from now on, I will do anything you ask of me, no charge. Great children, mercy children, and we shall do no charge. Gladly come to worship, gladly to offer our tithes and offerings, gladly surrender. Lay all our sons to you. He is here. Stay with. You will gladly join in the work of the church, any, any work. Amen? Because it's all for the grace of our God. It's all that we love our God. Amen? You know, kids, they have uh, this challenge. They figure this out. And I, I found it in, uh, on, uh, on social media. And they said what? The truth of life. And thou shalt not, cannot tithe, broccoli, and milk, right? And their mothers, parents try to feed them green and uh, cannot hide. It. That's so true, right? If you, you cannot hide broccoli and milk. And uh, another one, I like that. You can trust God for to be loyal to you, keep your house, but you cannot ever trust God to what? Watch over your food. No matter what you do, you cannot uh, baptize your pet. And I, I love this one. Thou shalt not let your mom comb your hair when she is mad at your dad. <laughs> Did it happen to you, Cheryl? No? Ever? <laughs> Little kids know the truth of life and get it right. And if when we want to enter kingdom of heaven, we've got to get it right. Something, the truth, we've got to get it right. We try to do our very best. And if 
it's not going to happen. Uh, we are going to fall short of God's glory all the time if we try to do it 